Is there a key, Kevin, in these kind of temperatures, this, this kind of cold weather? What do, you, what do you want to see from both the pitcher and hitter early in this game? Well, one thing I've seen from Reese Dutton so far this year is that good tempo. He's up on the mound ready to pitch, uh, strike one, strike two, and uh, he's really forcing contact and trying to use that dominating sinker to induce a lot of ground balls. So working fast and keeping that ball down. Swing and a miss. Even a one and one. I think on a cold day, those uniforms are good looking. They are sharp, aren't they? Right back up the middle. Chatney leaves things off with a base hit. Nice swing by Chatney right there. Kind of a tough pitch, low and away with a little bit of movement. He didn't try to do too much. Just a quick, short swing. Didn't even uh, follow through all the way. Just got uh, uh, hammered right, right back up the middle. Nice job by leadoff man getting on top of the ball and putting a little pressure on, uh, on the pitcher with the man on first. That's 14 straight games now that he has reached base safely. That'll bring up Sam Myers, the left fielder. Uh, the TCU kind of goes as Shutney is going. That's why he's at that leadoff spot. He's already 14 game hit streak and see how long that goes this weekend. First pitch to Sam Myers. Just misses. 1 0. There's always a whole different feel about going to Big 12 play. It's earlier this year and going against a team like TCU, number three in the, in the country. Just a huge challenge and opportunity for this Jayhawks team who's had an outstanding season so far with uh, power numbers and their starting pitcher, Dutton being one of them, has had a fantastic year already. What is the difference? Is it electricity? Is it just a different feel to the game when it's a league game? Oh, you can feel it with fr Friday Night Lights. and it's, it's like a whole new season starting over. They're, they're, Foul away. There's league play, but you're never going to see the arms like you see in uh, in Big 12. The, the Big 12 pitching is is outstanding. It's like what you see in the Cape Cod League, even up to like Double A standards. And I think TCU is no exception. They're they're the top team preseason in the Big 12, and I think they have the pitching uh, to prove it. Already top almost in the country in strikeouts per game. First. Shot in diving back. Sam Myers, a good looking freshman, ranked as the number eight outfield prospect in Texas. Facing Dutton. Runner goes. No throw, and Shot is into second base. Yeah, it's number eight on the year, already eight for nine on the season. He was working at the hole uh, at that last previous three pitches, uh, getting a running start, getting some bounces over there, trying to distract a pitcher, but trying to really get a good jump. And that, that's what you want out of your leadoff, man. Lead off, get a line drive to get on. Great job of getting uh, getting the base stolen. And Jake English has been the top in the country at throwing guys out already, throwing six guys out, but didn't have a chance there uh, with that great jump. So runner in scoring position now, 2-1 pitch. Just outside three and one. Myers off to a 371 start. A chance to do some early damage here. Nine away. That's two aboard now for TCU. See that good arm side run from Dutton. That ball just moving way off the plate, about four or five inches. But he's got his good stuff. The velocity's there. It's always tough to pitch on a cold day like this and get a good uh, grip on the ball. It's, uh, not only is it cold, it's been spitting all day, and the ball's going to get wet uh, no matter what. But see, he holds the ball in that change-up grip to start, and it kind of works off there. And Number three hitter, Curtis Byrne, sends this one to right field. Warriors under it. Chatney tags going to third, and he's going to make it. Both runners move up. So now with just one down, second and third for the Frogs. Nice little poke from a burn out there, just to get to right field, and a good throw by Ashby. But nice job of moving up, not only to third base, but a second runner following up. Uh, not the hardest hit ball, but uh, makes a, that's why you need the best arm in right field for them making the longest throw. And 
Lenny Ashby, of course, excuse me. You you were kind of licking your chops. You saw that uh, the flag blowing out to right field, weren't you? Yeah, you don't see that very much at this ballpark. Usually it's blowing in from right. Logan Maxwell, nice play. Cranford gets the out at first. The run will score. But a nice diving stop by the Kansas second baseman. Because of that aggressive base running, that play right there just saved a run uh, for Collier Cranford to end up giving up a run, but uh, sa he saved one as well. And that's a shortstop moving over to second. We got an infield full of shortstops right now. And Cranford normally playing shortstops over at second base right now. And that is an amazing play. That ball is by him in the outfield already. And that, he thought it was it already got through there, but he robbed a RBI. And, Great piece of hitting, even better defense. It's like making a play in the hole, wasn't it? Oh, that was deep. That was uh, that was uh, out in the short right field right there. That was uh, an amazing play from Cranford. Show you what shortstop can do at second base. Anthony Silva now steps in. Runner at third, two down. Chop to second. Cranford is there. The Jayhawks limit the damage. Just one run. The Horn Frogs take the early lead. After the top of the coming coming today, just just to watch him, just go. You don't see that size of lefty very much, but like what uh, Coach Fitzgerald did, one left-handed bat in the lineup to start off this game because this is going to be a tough uh, arm angle, and he already has 22 strikeouts on the year. Putting the ball in play is going to be at a premium with uh, with this kind of uh, arm coming at you. Making his first start of the season, Carson Bowen behind the plate for TCU. Chase Brunson in center field. Myers getting the start in left. And there's John Nett. What do you like about John at the plate? Uh, John's outstanding, a uh, leadoff type guy. He gives you a uh, good quality at bat. He's going to try to drive the ball to that opposite field and really uh, take away the outside part of the plate. And made the, one of the best plays I've ever seen in center field this, this past week. He robbed a home run on perfect timing, showed his athleticism. So he's just a tough guy, a guy that's had tremendous uh, success already at the college level, now coming to KU and really like the way he plays and the way he starts out a ball game. Down on the count 0-2. Fouls that one away. You're talking about Tolle. He's an impressive presence on the mound. 6'6", 250 pounds. You're looking for a lefty tight end? Man. <laughs> Long stride, yeah. swing and a miss. Tolle gets the first strikeout. That's just a power fastball right there. Gets the legs up for some good uh, power and really drives off that back leg. Gets some extension to where when he's releasing the ball, he's pretty close to home plate, uh, almost to where it turns from dirt back to grass again. But you call it almost like playing darts. It's right? like playing darts where he's just reaching, and the closer you can get, the, the better you can uh, get there. But that just makes it a split second harder and makes 91 look closer to 97, 98 miles an hour. So Janaga steps in. Now the sophomore at first base tonight. Cody takes this one to center field. Off the wall. He's turning and heading for two, and he'll make it standing up. All that hard work pays off, doesn't it? You were talking about he may be the hardest working guy on the team. Uh, he just lives in the cage, and you could see how hard a worker he is uh, working even after the game with Coach Fitzgerald. And got a ball up about belt level, stayed inside it, and he's just a professional hitter. He'll hit the ball wherever it's pitched. I kind of compared to Edgar Martinez style. Wherever it's pitched, that's where he drives it. Can't hit a ball any harder than that, and love to see that. It, all that hard work does pay off, and that's a, that's a big swing right there. That's out of a lot of ballparks, but he hit that hard off the wall. Great base running, but that, that barrel is through the zone a long time for Cody. That was halfway up that wall. Big stand up double. As Lenny Ashby steps in now. Talked about his week. Co newcomer of the week in the Big 12. That's that one, one and one. How about his approach to hitting? Uh, he, he 
really good job of he has a good eye at the plate but he'll be aggressive in the strike zone he can drive and i've seen it down the third baseline down the first baseline is the toughest matchup he's probably seen all year or we'll see all year with that side uh, uh, side angle that's coming across home plate as well uh, this is going to be a tough one but i really like what he's added to the jayhawk lineup he's just a, a pure hitter love him in, in the three hole and uh, he does about as good a job as he can staying inside out the ball if it's away from him and uh, taking away a pitcher's biggest uh, strength. Cody spins and fires to second. But Lenny, he's uh, about 5'7", and he gets a pretty good crouch down there. So his strike zone is a lot smaller than most guys. It's a little bit different. Uh, where If you miss just by a little bit, he can attack that low ball as well. And he has been as hot as anybody in the order. Strike three called. Great pitch. That is just full max effort right there. Great mechanics and just a power pitch. Good extension where you reach that left arm out as far as you can to reach that outside corner. And that's an unhittable pitch. At most, you can maybe try to foul that thing off. But that's either strike three or a ball. That's right on the corner. That's Jake English for Kansas. Runner at second. Swing and a miss. With the angle that came across, it looked like when it crossed home plate, it was a strike. But by the time it gets to a catcher, it's almost off the plate. That's how uh, how much that ball is moving, even across home plate. Just, it's not uh, fair when those guys are 6'6", six, six, though, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Throwing downhill. Strike call. Totally up the count 0-2 oh now. Yeah, I've been around a lot of scouts, and you, you talk to the scouts, the first thing they look for, oh, big lefty, 6'6 six, six lefty, or switch hitting catcher, one, one of those two. But usually 6'6 uh, six, six lefty, that's, that's, the, that's the first thing. It's hard to grow them, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're rare, especially you can throw it like this, and he's not a finesse lefty. He's going to give you everything he has, and really that, that fastball is his best pitch. It's just a matter of getting that good tilt and the, across the home plate the action. One, two pitch. Opt into center field. Brunson underneath it. Gathers it in. The Jayhawks leave one on base. In the bottom of the first, the Jayhawks score no runs. We've played one in Lawrence. No TCU leads it. One nothing here in the Big 12 opener. You second for TCU. Third baseman number Give off nine. Lead off single Green. in the first inning. But the Frogs turned into a run. Brody Green, a third baseman. We'll leave things off for TCU. Feels good here in Hoakland. His first career hit was here at Kansas in May of 22. Yeah, he's a good looking ball player and he's already three doubles on the year. He's a guy that can go run and swing the bat well, but give you a tough at bat. TCU's had, uh, they've won every game this year and they played uh, stiff uh, competition, great, really great Pac-12 teams, but a lot of close games. They're, they're a team that's used to uh, being in one run ball games and coming up on top so far. It's a tough thing to do in college baseball. And shows you a lot about how, how they are all the way through the lineup. Another good pitch from Dutton. He's ahead in the count now, one and two. Dutton has his good stuff today with that movement. That's a downward action and Look for to try to get more ground balls. What he got to clear Cranford, amazing play out there. That's going to be the key to trying to win this game. Foul the way. Oh, 15 strikeouts over 15 innings coming into this game. Yeah, he's a, he can get the strikeouts, and he had 107 strikeouts last season. That's a big time number for college, and another great uh, transfer coming into the program. But really like what he brings uh, with the mentality and stuff wise. Ground ball. Tough play for Cranford. It goes into right field. Ashby gathers it up. And once again, the leadoff hitter is aboard for TCU. Nice swing, just driving the ball that way. To me, that's probably a base hit. It hit really hard right there. I don't think, I think that's, a, that's a tough ball to make. Just a good inside out swing, getting that foot down and driving it that way. Carson Bowen steps in, the catcher. Preseason All Big 12. Good movement there, strike one. 
nasty pitch. You would think about that slider we've been talking about with the, the power run and that uh, slider go along with it. They look like the same pitch coming in and one just darts off, off the plate. That is a nasty mix on a, on a fastball count. Like two call. Those both look like O2 pitches right there. That's exactly what you want, uh, O2. That's just nasty. Nothing you can do with that. And actually, good job taking that tough pitch. Round of the third. Tough play from Brooks. Gets it to second in time to get the lead runner. Great pitch there by Dutton, keeping the ball low and forcing contact on the ground. Nice play by Michael Brooks going to that glove side and taking away a double right down the line, getting uh, that lead out. And Brooks has been outstanding at third base, the hot corner. I think the toughest vision to play college baseball. Got to have the bunts and take away that long play. What a nice uh, reflex right there to uh, initiate what could have been a double play. So one down for Luke Boyers, right fielder. Ground to second. There's one. Not in time for two, but Kansas once again gets that lead runner. That's what I like the most about uh, Reese Dutton, the forcing contact early in the count and with that downward sinking action, tailing action to get off the barrel enough. and. Really nice uh, try to turn right there. A little bit too much speed. Boyers can really run. Good switch hitter. But nice job of Dutton just being who he is and doing what he does. Not necessarily going for the strikeout, but something more valuable on a Friday. Get through the innings and uh, uh, get get deep into a ball game. Another good pitch from Dutton. Strike one to Chase Brunson, center fielder. Some as a freshman of the year in the Big 12. Hit hard to center field. Net is there. And Kansas is out of the inning. Board, he'll see Jensen Reeder here, the designated hitter. One of the lefties in the Kansas lineup. Carson Bowen getting his mask worked on there. What are the challenges we see Tolley up there at six foot six? What are the challenges as a left-handed hitter facing a guy like Tolley? Oh, he's the reason why I started switch hitting. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what <laughs> facing guys like going right today. Yeah, I'm going right-handed today, and man, it was well worth it just because it's that kind of angle. And it reminds me of that that Randy Johnson, some of the. Old, old videos with him, with John Crook, or with uh, even with Dion, lefty on lefty. It's just you're seeing the ball so late that uh, it's just such an advantage right there. And that angle coming across home plate. If there's a tougher thing to do in sports, to hit a, there's nothing tougher than hitting a baseball. And the lefty on lefty matchup like this is uh, even tougher. So just give them credit for hanging in there and doing what they can, even with uh, late being able to pick pick up that baseball. Just a slight shake of the head from. Reader thought maybe that one was just a bit inside, but 0-2. Oh Fouls that one away. And there's a different kind of lefty, too, guys that can kind of stand a little bit with an open stance. Those guys can see a ball a little bit better, or even more square. I had a little more closed stance where it's even a tougher on your, on your eyes. Down the left field line, Frogs giving chase. It's going to go out of play. Green given chase. Everyone's hats were flying out there. The wind's still got a factor. There's a bunch of factors in today's game. That cold, you can see the uh, breath of the guys playing out there. It's in the 30s, but uh, there is a little bit of breeze too. So, Reader, a guy that when he gets the ball elevated, it can go out of the ballpark. Let's that one go. One and two. Good look at the flags. 
a strong wind. I would say under 10 miles an hour, but blowing out to right. So he takes him upstairs and gets a strikeout, his third. That's the high heat right there. Really good combination of pitches followed by the just uh, looks good coming in, but it does not hit good. That is already by uh, uh, for a left-handed bat. That's really tough to hit anything above the belt level. So yeah, that might look good, but that is a, that's a tough pitch and a tough to lay off. Great pitch with two strikes. Michael Brooks, who made a nice play at third base, fouls it back. 0-1. There's the sound of that mitt that pop hearing that. I mean, that's that's what baseball right there. But you can you can hear it. He's a power pitcher. There's uh, no finesse about it. Good mechanics, but he is tried to throw it right through the catcher. Next that one outside, one and two. Totally one of the rare guys that uh, hits as well. He can put both ways uh, on the field. And he's already got 10 ribbies on the air. A guy that can be a, a force with the bat, but it's going to focus all on his pitching uh, here Friday night. Looks like that one off. That's an outside corner. Too far, two and two. And Michael Brooks, a great play uh, previous inning, taking away an extra base hit right down the line, showing his range over there at third base. Brooks hanging tough. Still two two. That's a quality at bat. That's a, that's what you like to see. You're going against a big time stud ace against a team that's uh, ranked about as high as you're going to see all year long and. Just to go in there and uh, fight early, that's, that's a good sign, get, get the way to show the team. On the right field line, Boyers fighting a little bit of that win. Squeezes it and they're two down. Now batting for the Jayhawks, left fielder, number 42, Chase Jans. Chris Jans now, the Kansas left fielder. His fifth start of the season. This is outside, one and all. James is a guy with a lot of big uh, 12 experience now and great guy to put in the lineup against the left-handed pitcher today and he's going to give you a quality at bat and a big time athlete out there in left field. Yeah. This one Former Blue Valley Tiger. Pop at 93 miles an hour. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Yeah, that's 91. To, we've seen up to 93, maybe even 94. Uh, sometimes, man, a lot of times that's a two seam fastball. We're getting a little run on that thing, too, and mixes in a four seamer as well. But both of those fastballs attack in the outside corner. Nice play. Showing you. It was a quite a good play. I've seen some good baseball uh, tonight already. Hard hit balls and really good defended uh, play out there, even though it's tough conditions. Grant made a nice play at second base as well. Both second basemen really shining. Shot in the A with a uh, single and a stolen base in the first inning. Came around to score. The only run of this game thus far. Hold back. No. Oh. One on one. This is an important guy to get out in the lineup and shot in the A. Not only uh, batting at a good clip, but when he gets on base, he's already eight for nine uh, stealing bases. So keeping him off base is a key the rest of this ballgame. 
Good pitch there by Reese Dutton. Had him off balance a little bit. One and two. Nasty breaker. That had more 12 6 downward action on it right there. Away. Won a national championship with Ole Miss on their squad in 22. Must be able to bring that kind of experience and leadership into your lineup, isn't it? I was up in Omaha during that. They had a big time run, and that was a really nice, a nice team. That fan base gets uh, gets wild as well. That's a really good ball club, but. Nice transfer to bring over a guy that's uh, been to the biggest uh, where you're trying to go and put him right at the top of the order. Guy with a tremendous plus plus speed. Takes this one into center field. That back pedals. Makes a catch one down. Good at bat, but even even now better job TCU, by Dunn competing and 13, making Sam a good Myers. hitter uh, fight off some tough pitches. He showed some nasty uh, sliders right there, breaking off the table and like his uh, competitiveness, composure, and what you said, kind of working out of some not uh, huge jams, but anything that looks like a jam did a nice job of uh, controlling the damage. Sam Myers drew a walk in that first inning. Scores around a bunt. Pulled it back. One and out. Good pitch from Dutton. One and one. That was a backdoor breaker right there. That wasn't a strike the whole way there. It just falls right into the strike zone. Un unhittable pitch and easy to give up on that early. Ranford slides, gathers, not in time. Tough play for the Kansas second baseman. Myers with some pretty good speed. Yeah, Myers can get down the line, especially from that left-handed batter's box and having to make a slide play right there. Collier Cranford, good effort just getting over there, knocking the ball down, and good 90 beats that out. Base hit for Myers. Kind of one of those in between plays. You dive for it, you slide for it, you stand up. I don't think either one of them was the tough, and that was probably the best option right there, going for that slide. So I'll take away a base hit earlier. That's Burn. Flew out to right his first time up. That's been one thing I noticed about this Jayhawk pitching staff. They do a good job of using the weapons of uh, either using a slide step or good pickoff moves or whatever they can to help out. They have a great uh, catcher behind the dish in English. You can throw throw guys out, but they, they really keep a good mind and are quick to home plate to give a catcher a chance. I think TC is a little more of an aggressive straight base stealing team out, out of the two. Jayhawks do a good job of hitting run, even uh, using the bunt game. But I think say power is their, their, their number one source of scoring runs so far this year. Myers with one stolen base on two tries this year. We're talking with Tom Bergmeyer, Royals instructor from a Royals pitcher, talking about catchers and, you know, release time and pop time and 
innings. What are you doing with the pitchers, though? That's the key. What are you doing with the pitchers? If you can't, if you can't hold a guy on, the catcher has no chance. That's a great point. A lot of times you steal a base off the pitcher rather than you do the catcher. And that's why a left-handed pitcher has such an advantage, being able to see over there at first base. But righties have a, stuff that they can, they can do as well and the, uh, good tools and weapons. But Ground ball. Brooks gets the lead runner. Not in time for two, but another fine play. Michael Brooks. Great pitch once again, forcing contact on the ground, chopping it in the ground, and Brooks is in doing good at getting his distance and really getting about 15 feet behind third base, taking away extra base hits and getting that lead runner, but playing really deep in the hole. You got to play all over the field at third base right now. He's moving over, playing closer to where short stops at and covering a lot of that ground. But good job moving around and taking away bunts, but still taking away doubles. Logan Maxwell steps in. Lefty at the plate. Take strike one. There's the shift you're talking about. Hit hard to center field. That up with it quickly so the runner will advance one base. Two on with two out. That's why Logan Maxwell shows you why he's batting 421 and that average is rising. Good job of a two strike approach, waiting back on the breaking ball, not getting out to the front foot and staying inside the ball right up the, right up the middle. It's a great swing on a tough pitch. So here's Anthony Silva with 11 RBIs on the season. Takes him in strike strike one. Ground out to end the first inning. He has a run producer. Good play by English. Keep that in front of him. Great stop. That's another aspect of Jake English's game. He's a wall behind the plate. Nothing, nothing gets by him. That pop time you're talking about, he is quick uh, with, especially with that good arm down, down to second base, especially. So he's a weapon behind the plate as well as with the bat. One one pitch. Just misses inside two and one. Three and one now. Number five hitter, Anthony Silva. Yeah, totally a fastball count right here. The good, uh, good hitter, a guy that can uh, drive it to uh, all parts of the park. But really, big part of this uh, ball game here early. Do not want to give up a crooked number. Swing and a miss. Dunn comes back with a good pitch. Nasty slider on that three-one count. You thinking fastball, and you get that. That's a uh, Nasty pitch, good job swinging through it, and that's a, that's a big time confidence in that secondary pitch. Full count now, two down. Runners go on the ground. Brooks across the diamond. TCU will leave two on board. In the top of the third, TCU. Michael Brooks getting the workout. Kansas. And nice play at second base. Foul back. Pitch from Peyton Tolley. 
Yeah, this is what you expect uh, from the Big 12, this type of pitching. Both teams have it going on right now, both in their own ways. Uh, I think Dutton's done a nice job ground balls, and that would take him to center field. Brunson does a nice job to run it down, one down. Great swing by Collier Cranford, keeping the middle of the field, hitting a pitch. It's not an easy pitch to hit and driving it that way. Even better defensive play, but it's about the third or fourth really hard hit ball by, by the Jayhawks. Both teams have been, even on their outs, have been hitting the ball uh, pretty hard, some good hard hit balls. And here recently they've been seeing it, but it's hitting it right at these uh, Horn Frogs. Chase Diggins now for Kansas, number nine hitter, except ball one. One on one. Another good looking ball player doing a good job at shortstop. He's smooth, good feet over the over there. He can get to a lot of a lot of range over there and has a unique stance. He gets uh, crouched down and takes a good swing a little late. Uh, right now getting that front foot down, seeing that little bit of plus velocity and but he had a nice uh, week where he drove some balls and looks like he's gonna be a new uh, talented Jayhawk. Well, when you're solid defensively on that left side, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? He's got some good range over there. He takes a lot of the field. Up high. Two and two. Diggins fighting hard here, still at two and two. See a lot of quality at bats from the Jayhawks, don't you? That's one thing I really like about this team. They'll take the walks. They have guys who have big time of walk numbers, but they'll see a lot of pitches and aggressive in the zone. Tried to hold back. One round, two down. That's a close one right there. I didn't think he quite went. That's a, about as close as, it, close as it gets right there. We'll see. You. That'll take it back to the top of the order. John Nett struck out in the first inning. Takes that one to left center field. Solid base hit, and he's not stopping. Turns for second. Two out double from John Nett. Just a frozen row from John Nett. He got that front foot down right on time. Good extension. Drove the ball to that left center field. And two hits for the Jayhawks so far and two extra base hits. So already into square position, seeing if he can get this uh, lead back right here. Really good job of controlling the damage uh, defensively and now uh, trying to do some damage of their own. But great swing, and that ball stayed in the air a long time. Janaga with a double of his own in the first inning. It's a ball one with a runner in scoring position. Cody was the co-freshman player of the year last year, and his average just went up in Big 12 play, batting over 400 in Big 12, and starting off this Big 12 season uh, really well once again. In the right field. Warriors tracks it down, that wind blowing out, and making him a little bit of an adventure out there, but he pulls it in. The Jayhawk dugout coach, what have you seen out of Reese Dutton? He's battled pretty good around a little bit of trouble there. Yeah, he's been great. I think his slider is really good tonight. It's, it's uh, he's feeling it and going with it. You know, the, the wiggle out of the first inning after base hit walk. First and third, one out, and be able to get out with one out. I thought with one run, I thought that was big. But he looks great. Coach, uh, totally is awfully tough, but you've had a couple of good swings, a couple of doubles there off of him. What have you seen out of the out of your hitters thus yeah, far? Yeah, and then Chance, you know, hammers that one to second. Collier with the hammer, uh, line out to center. So, I think you know we're on it. Um, you know he is good. Everyone, I mean, every pitcher we see moving yeah. forward is really good. Yeah. 
Coach, we'll keep you here for just a second. But uh, the, uh, the this TCU lineup is loaded, and you've, you've played some good defense against them. And as you mentioned, Reese has pitched pretty well against this, this loaded lineup. Yeah, they're good, and they're a complete team. They can pitch, they can defend, they can hit. You know, they can score in different ways. And, uh, yeah, they're a good team. You know, this is... This is exactly what you sign up for when you play in this league and, and when you play at this level it's for games like this and nights like tonight. Coach, you guys are off to such a great start as well. What do you like about your team so far during this uh, this early part of this set? Yeah, well, I, I love their fight. I think it's a competitive team. They're great teammates. They really take good care of each other. They're, they're, uh, there's a lot of humility towards each other, and I think at the end of the day that, that's a big thing at being a teammate, and it's a big thing in working and getting better. But work ethic, you know, all, all the compete stuff is at a high level, and um, I just like the way, I like our process. These guys are not, you know, outside of the first two games where we were sped up, just debut stuff. Outside of that, I thought our preparation's been fantastic, and, and uh, I love the way they're going about it. Coach, we really appreciate the time. Thank you, you very much. Rock shot, guys. Appreciate it. Head Coach Dan Fitzgerald joining us from the dugout. Always good to hear from the head coach, and uh, he talks about the process, and he kind of like what he's doing. <laughs> he's, his Jayhawks are playing well right now. Reese Dutton with the strikeout. The process, and he also liked that slider as well. He was talking about the slider for Reese Dutton, and look at this nasty one, just breaking right off the table. That's a big league slider right there. Starts as a strike, ends up as a ball, but you're right. They have some structured professional practices, and they're all about development. Been more than impressed with what he's done in recruiting and getting guys in here who can really compete and show their power, whether it be with the bats or with the arms. Another good off speed from Dutton. Oh, one now to Carson Bowen. We were talking just between innings about developing players. And that's got to be obviously you've got to bring in guys that can win now, but you also part of the program is. You've, you've got to be able to make your players better, right? That's exactly right. And that's what, the thing about this TCU team. They, they've done that as well. And you got to, you can get the, the players, but you got to make them buy in. And this guy, they, they compete. And I think Reese Dutton is a shining example of that, where he comes in as a transfer and becomes a team leader right away. How, how many times do you hear that? I mean, is the guy going to fit in? Maybe or maybe not. But be the team leader right away. That's uh, more than a compliment and shows you what kind of guy, what kind of guy he wants representing you coming out Friday night. Dutton gets that outside corner, two and two. Bowen reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Full count now. Yeah, they've been challenged, even with their inner squad, they've been competitive uh, battles. We've seen some huge uh, velocity versus velocity and played against uh, Dallas Baptist and Oklahoma State preseason where they got some good experience and a tough uh, preseason. So they're they're ready to go and a more talented team than we've seen, powerful team seen quite a while. And this is just an opportunity uh, weekend here for the, for the Jayhawks going against this type uh, of talent, a team that wants to keep playing well into the postseason possibly even hit to Omaha. Good pitch from Dutton. It's Bowen to go, strikeout. Number two in the inning. That is a pitcher's pitch, unhittable. He couldn't throw a bat out there and hit that pitch. That, that might have looked good for a second, but that is, you're not going to get hurt with that pitch at all. You just have to have confidence in your catcher. He's, he's going to go block that. And Good job of those two as a battery working together. and the right uh, pitch call as well. The Boyer steps in, now ball foul. I think a small part of this game, but that 3-1 count when uh, Reese Dutton went to that slider, went to that nasty pitch uh, on a fastball count, showed confidence and got out of that jam. Probably a little bit of a turning point in the momentum of this game, just where it, you really showed that kind of confidence. and. Talk about that confidence, especially on a cold night when it's it's got to be hard to throw those breaking pitches, isn't it? That's that's just a, uh, shows you that's a big time pitch, and it, it got it got out of a, a big jam. I don't think a fastball would have got out of that kind of jam the way that that pitch did. And lo love seeing that, and that's uh, I think that's what Coach Fitzgerald was talking about. He's really able to spin it tonight. Three up, three down, three strikeouts for Reese Dutton. In the top of the fourth, he's Jayhawks he's hanging tough. Coming to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. Trailing one. The bottom of the fourth with the three, four, and five hitters due up. Peyton tolley has been tough. Kansas has got to him for a couple of doubles, but no runs. Starts letting Ashby off at the breaking ball. 
Owen one. Ashby got caught looking the first inning. It's always fun to watch hitters go to work, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and I liked what Coach Fitzgerald was saying. They hit a couple doubles, but they also hit a couple of lineouts, yeah. which could have been doubles if they're two feet away. He couldn't hit any harder. Likes the approach up there, like you were talking about, the laying off the pitches out of the zone and still uh, managing to hit the ball hard going against this tough angle. But yeah, the, he is a, a hitter, a guy that you would like to watch him hit. Even during batting practice, he's a fun guy to watch. But like how he gets his weight shifted, gets that front foot down on time, but uh, keeps that barrel through the zone. And uh, this isn't going to be an easy, easy matchup. Every pitch he's seen has been over that outside corner and lo looks like it's away uh, all, all the way. It's just that angle is as tough as it gets. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. For the strikeout for Peyton Tolley. Peyton Tolley sticking with that heat, uh, just climbing the ladder each pitch a little bit higher, that one getting up above the belt. And not a bad swing right there, right on time, trying to uh, get a little backspin with that. Just a power uh, pitch on the inside could be tough on a, on a cold night like this. Jake English, the catcher. Flew out to center, looks at strike one. English has been fantastic with the bat. He's led the team in walks, but also two multi-home run games. He's been really driving the ball, especially the left field. That low one and one. Got it into the ground and through for a base hit. Kansas has a runner on board with one down. Anthony Silva playing that pull side out there at shortstop, and uh, Jake English taking advantage of it. He's rolling over a tad bit, but keeping it up the middle. And with that uh, little slightly shift over there to the left side, nice job of getting on base once again for Jake English. Solid batting average right around that 400 mark still this is late into the season. Jansen Reeder struck out in the second inning. Has a runner on board. Strike call. That's the second time he's seen that outside pitch. <laughs> just, just a little shake of the head. Not too far outside. One and one. Yeah, I think that shake of the head that he's thinking, looking for fastball, but that's not the fastball yeah. you're looking for. It's yeah. right on the corner, painting the outside black part of the plate. And, Looking for something over the meat of the plate. He's got a really good power zone low and in. He, he hits that, that ball. Uh, he can drive it as far as anybody in the country. Totally staying away, two and one. Way two and two. Say with Peyton Tolley so far, he's up there ready to pitch, good tempo, but he's not messing around with a lot of different pitches. He is going after you with a fastball. You even hear some grunts after he throws. He's giving it max effort on every throw. The location is just what he's changing up, inside and outside, and majority outside. Popped up, left center field. Everyone converging. Center fielder will take charge. Two down for the Jihans. Third baseman, number six, Michael Brooks. So it's Michael Brooks for Kansas. A fly out to right in the second inning. Here with a runner on. Jayhawks to see that move to first. 
That's what you always want to do, get a big-time power pitcher out of his rhythm, out of his routine, and even get him into the stretch a little bit. And... High down the right field line, but it's going to go out of play. See uh, Chase Brunson out in center field, playing a little bit to that right center field gap. Uh, shows you how they're going to pitch. Michael Brooks probably out of the outside part of the plate, but huge gap between the left and uh, center fielder out there. Michael Brooks, he's take, take advantage of that. That's uh, He's a guy that can pull the ball as good as anybody, and huge gap out there to work with. Takes it right into that gap. Base hit. Runner on the way to third. Throw goes into second, so that will keep Brooks at first, but first and third for the Jayhawks. Another nice swing and good approach for the Jayhawks. Just keep hitting the ball hard and good things will happen. Wait back, a little bit of off-speed pitch uh, outside corner and got on the front foot and he kept the barrel through the zone. Nice line drive and good defense getting it into back into second base, not allowing a runner to move up. But I like that aggressive base running from Jake Inglis going up first to third right there. That's his read. He's not picking up a coach and that's a great decision to get 90 feet away from tying this ball game up. Jans was robbed. Peyton Chatnier with a nice play at second base. Back in the second inning. Again, the Jayhawks unable to check the swing. Oh, he did. Okay, 1 0. Good swing. Chase James was right on that one, right on time for the fastball, just underneath it. And big spot here for the Jayhawks. You don't get many opportunities against a guy, a guy like this, and every run, every 90 feet is going to be magnified in a Friday night ball, ball game like this. Too far. Side two and one. Swing by Chase Jans, a pretty good hole on the right side, opened up with first base holding on and second base right up the middle. Chase could poke one over that way, but he has been right on time with those fastballs and taking good aggressive A hacks. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Tolley. Kansas leaves him at the element. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's seen this Kansas with it before, hasn't he? Yeah, Midwest kid. He was—he's from Oklahoma, but went to Wichita State the first two years. So, this is a balmy day in Wichita. <laughs> yeah. Coach, you, you've had some fantastic defense. Shotney with a with a, a great uh, a great rob there at second base. Uh, just talk about what you've seen from your team thus far. Yeah, so far, I mean, it's been pretty clean. Would like to have been able to um, add on a couple runs in the first inning. I thought we had really good bat at bats in the beginning, but. The, he did a really good job. Doesn't did a really good job of getting out of it, and he's doing kind of what he does. And so, for us, it's about the main thing is just keep putting up, putting up good at bats. And you know, Coach Fitz over there, his team's always going to play all nine, and it, it's going to take a really good effort all nine innings to win a ball game here for sure. You guys have been off to such a great start. What 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 is working right now for TCU? What 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 is the what is the element that you like about this team thus far? Well, I don't think there's there's any panic. There is any quit. No matter what the game or situation has. Um, They've been able to answer the answer the bell, and so we've won ugly. Um, we've won where we've scored a bunch of runs and haven't pitched well. We've, and that's more the regular than the opposite. Um, but we, we've we've pitched well in stretches. It's a matter of to do that consistently in our league. You're going to have to do that because you know a good pitcher is always going to silence a, a good offense. So you got to be able to to bring your pitching staff on the road and and put up zeros and. Um, but great start to a Big 12 season right now uh, in the fourth or in the fifth inning already and uh, got ourselves a ball game. It's a great ball game, Coach. We really enjoy it. Thank you very much for the time. We appreciate you bet. it. Go Frogs. Thanks. Saw the fly out to center field there from Chase Brunson. One down for Reese Dutton. Go back to the top of the order. Peyton Chatagnier 
We talked about his fine defensive play. Scored the only run in this game in the first inning after a single and a stolen base. Brooks crossed the diamond. Two down. I think Coach says Harlow's hit it on the head, and good pitching is going to go after and get that get out good hitting. So we, we know there's some great hitters around the ballpark tonight, but there's been really good, if not great, pitching as well. Another job of Reese Dutton, what he does, pound the bottom of the strike zone, and with that movement, he's creating early outs uh, and able to still keep a really nice pitch count here into the fifth inning. You were really excited about the pitching matchup, not only tonight, but really all weekend long, and we've, we've seen really outstanding performances from both pitchers. Sam Myers steps in now with two down. Yeah, for the Jayhawks, it's the best I've seen with uh, one, two, three, where you could go either way. Where it kind of reminds me of that Maddox, Smoltz, or Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, where you didn't know who was the best, but you just pitch them one, two, three. But all three of them have looked really solid and in in their own ways. And I think Reese Dutton is uh, with his mentality, the way he takes the mound, a really great guy for Friday night. Those guys behind him are, are, are just uh, nipping, nipping at the heels. They're trying to, to match his performance. It's got to do something. When somebody goes out on a Friday night, kind of sets the standard, if you will, for what the weekend's going to be like. Uh, that's kind of part of being a great leader, it, isn't it? It's contagious, definitely, 100%. And that, that's what you want to do. But he, Reese Dunn's going to set the tone for, uh, for those guys. He's doing a great job tonight. One, two, pitch is fouled away. Yeah, but 13 and 0 can't really complain too much. So that's against some tough competition. As you talked about some some close games too. They they've lost their way to some victories. Some extra inning games here recently that they've won, and they, they've done it a lot of ways. Swing and a miss. You're stuck with the strikeout. Three up, three down in the top of the fifth inning. Great pitchers duel here in Lawrence. Collier Cranford leads things off for Kansas here in the bottom of the fifth inning. one nothing TCU. It's totally still on the mound for the Frogs. Six strikeouts on the night. The match almost pitch for pitch by Reese Dutt. We were talking about the pitching matchup and two different ways to do it, but uh, two very effective ways. I saw that pitch clock going there. We haven't had to talk about that no. very much. That thing has barely got to get going with the way these guys are mowing them down, but you got to like what the big lefty's doing, just dominating the strike zone, both sides of the plate with the fastball, and uh, good at bat here to see if you can see some pitches for Cranford, but I, I think what Reese Dutton is just as impressive, if not more, with that sinker creating ground balls uh, left after right, and that slider, he's able to spin it as good as, as anyone I've seen. So we've seen some fantastic arms going tonight, and see so you can break through first. Strike for Tolley. Kansas with four hits, couple of doubles, two singles. Fouled yeah. away, and just like that, Tolley's battled back to a full count, three and two. Cranford moved up to the leadoff spot a couple of uh, games this year, and he's a guy that can have, give you a good leadoff at bat. Yeah. Works a walk here, and Kansas has a leadoff hitter on board for the first time. Great lead off that from Collier Cranford getting on base and uh, forcing the guy who, who's on a roll to uh, take a little bit of break, having a meeting out there on, on the mound right now. So just uh, really good at that and uh, opportunity here for the Jayhawks to see if they can manufacture a run. Almost short of a runway for him when he steps off there. Yeah, he almost needs an extended uh, runway with how far he gets when he releases that baseball. Inside. So go back. This was four pitches in. Kevin, you talked about him just kind of landing awkwardly. And right there, you can see that he, he's not happy. Yeah, it looked like definitely grimace right there. And it was an instant shock. Like it wasn't something that's been wearing on him. It was something that he felt kind of sharp instantly. And Something that's definitely 
just kind of be on it yeah, physically, but definitely on his mind mentally, just uh, have, having to think about that in between each one. And he, before now, he's been up there just ready to pitch and just uh, focusing on hammering that strike zone. Now he's got an extra component to, to deal with. 2 0 pitch to Diggins. Finds a strike zone there, 2 and 1. Uh, Chase Diggins hit a home run and another ball off the wall uh, last weekend. So he has some good uh, power down at the bottom of this order. Hit hard to left field. Deep and gone. Two run home run. Chase Diggins gives Kansas the lead. Oh, it was almost kind of fighting the wind a little bit out there in the left field, wasn't it? Chase Diggins hitting that ball hard, and that was a great job of getting into a hitter's count, being patient, waiting for your pitch, and it is great to see firing the team up right there. One big uh, swing, got a pitch out over the plate, a pitcher who is dealing with uh, dealing with some stuff out there on the mound, and middle in, and then it's quick hit, hips, the hands, extension. Ball is out of here in a hurry, and that, that wind didn't necessarily help it, but that, 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 that was a no-doubter. and That's about the third swing in the last couple of days that Chase Diggins have been, looked like they've been out of the ballpark, and that's a good weapon to have as a shortstop. A guy with that kind of range who can, can drive the ball in the park, one big swing. He's going to give you a little different look, still being a lefty, but he steps across his body quite a bit and go, goes across where you're not going to see the ball till late. really creates really good deception, but... Preseason All-American, preseason All-Big 12, a guy that one of your best arms that you're going to use in, in the bullpen, not, not necessarily demoted the bullpen, but in, in the parts of the games that really matter, that's where he's going to be pitching. John Nett, the key leadoff hitter, doubled in the third inning. And that's the first batter, first pitch is a ball. In fact, he misses the runway when he pitches, <laughs> right? He steps all the way across that extra piece of turf that's on the mound. He'd be almost even tougher to face as a lefty on lefty oh matchup. Oh my gosh. That draws back to an 0. Those last two guys need their special runway when they get here. One extra long and one yeah, curved extra off to wide. the side. <laughs> Yeah, but that is a different angle. It looks like a lot of different things are coming at you as a hitter. You see the shoulder, the glove, everything, but the last thing you see is the ball, and it's coming across home plate instead of straight through it. Strike there, two and one. Hit hard at the middle, and gets through into center field. So Kansas keeps it going with nobody out. Another hard hit ball by John Nett right up the middle. And to me, that's a base hit that he gets on you uh, so quick. He's really hard uh, two hopper right there. And I think, I think that's a base hit all the way with how hard that's hit. And another multi hit game for John Nett, guy that's heating up at the right time of the year. Naga now, number two hitter, doubled in the first inning. Big swing and a miss. What did you like to look at when you see a relief pitcher come in? If you're on deck or you're in the dugout, what are you looking for? For me, the first thing is release point, where that ball, where you can focus. Usually it's right over a pitcher, either lefty right over his left shoulder. A righty right over his right shoulder. Different guys have different arm actions, but not the case here. They're, they're different tempos. Maybe watch how he how he works from the stretch. If it's a little bit quicker, what, what he's doing from different things. But you really want to just try to get on time, and you can't really duplicate what you see with this kind of low arm slot and coming across your body. Uh, but the best you can do is see more pitches and help out by uh, you see more pitches the whole team will too and then get, get a better chance but one time through the order this is about as tough a look as, as, as you're going to get but it's really just a, a timing thing and get, getting your own mind right foul back one and two Cody with that hard hit double in the first 
halfway up the center field wall. Fly out in the third. One two pitch. Taking for a ball there, two and two. Nice breaking ball right yeah. there, pretty slow one. Took a lot of uh, speed off that good take by uh, by Cody Shojinaga right there. Staying on that front foot and waiting back. Okay, so one inside, three and two. It's just great pitching sequence, low and away with the off speed, then hard up and in, right on the hands. Both of those pitches are tough to take and right uh, pitcher's pitches. 3-2 pitch. Strike three called. When you talk about the sequence, that was a pretty nice setup, wasn't it? That is nasty. 93 miles an hour right on the inside corner with a two-seam action, starting right at uh, the hip of a right-handed hitter and uh, tailing up back over to home plate. That is a great pitch and a big-time part of the game. And that's the toughest pitch to execute, that inside fastball can be really effective, but a lot of things can go wrong if you barely miss on that pitch. So it's Lenny Ashby now with one down. Ashby with a pair of strikeouts. Also going to be a tough guy to steal a base straight steal off of being left handed. He's looking at that base runner the whole time. John Nett, a good run over there, but the way he can read and be quick to home plate, that's a big advantage at controlling that running game. Strike called one on one. Gave a little look to first base there, too, as he started, didn't he? That's the advantage about being a lefty. You can go without even looking at them. You could put all your attention over there, but they're, they're not going anywhere. And you can keep that double play in order. So, so many things are different between first and second base. And being a lefty, that's such an advantage. Coach Sarlu's a left-handed pitcher. He, our, he knows he's at, always had some good lefties at, at TCU, and this year being no exception. They're one of the top teams in the country, probably thinking about going as far as you can go in college baseball, but they're going to be left-handed dominant. Fouled away. That last swing, that's an example of this matchup, how tough it is. Lenny Ashby, all we've seen is have been right on time, driving balls off the gap, and that was an uncomfortable swing. That's just something you pick up late and B-hack, just trying to keep your at-bat alive. Down to the count, one, two. Too far outside, two and two. Work over at first base. Just right. so a bit too far outside. Three and two now. Dropped down even lower on that one. Down with Dow two strikes. Went low three quarter arm action just for a little bit different look, but. Sometimes you make that pick off because you know you want to throw something off speed. That's a little bit better of a pitch to run on. So bring out all the stops in low three quarter. Pound it into the ground. Tough play. Over to first in time. Abel with a good job of covering first to record the out. 
And that goes to second base. Good at bat with that fight for Lenny Ashby. He never uh, given up, but you're right. That's a tough play for Abel, uh, being a left-handed pitcher, uh, falling off towards the third base side. He's already falling the opposite way of that, getting over there and covering, making it out. But We talk about fundamentals, too, how he rounds and goes up the baseline as he's taking that throw. That avoids the collision. Textbook. If you exactly. go right at the bag, there's going to be a nasty collision. I don't think uh, you're going to want to happen. You go up the line and uh, curve it up almost like you're a base runner. Two down now for Jake English. Foul that one back. Single in the fourth inning. Side from Abel. I think what I've noticed from what Coach Fitzgerald has brought as the team all the way through is a chance for power, especially uh, one through nine. You've seen the nine hole hitter hit a home run, but his last year hit a ton of home runs and already off to a great start with, with, with the long ball. This guy would be no exception. Double-digit home runs last year, and Jake English already uh, was six this year up there in the national rankings. So uh, he's brought a, a sense of power, which is always uh, a huge part, part of the ball game. you got to manufacture runs, but that one swing of the bat can make all the difference. Chance to add to the lead. 2-1. Outside. English will take his base. And now two aboard. Jansen Reeder. That's the smart call. 3-1 against the power hitting righty. You put him on Let him base go. and uh, get, get, take your chances against the left-hander. So I, I do like that decision. Tough at bat, lefty-lefty. You see if the Jayhawks can clutch up. Two on, two down. Strike from Abel. Swing and a miss, so and two. Saying this guy's even more lefty than the first left. <laughs> Bites that one off foul. Any more lefty, he'd be in the Kansas dugout, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, these are two extreme examples of what, uh, whether what we saw in Tolle reaching out, how close he can get to home plate, or here with Abert, how, how he can throw across the mound uh, to create a. Big uh, amount of deception. Can barely even see his uh, arm in the angle. It drops down so low. O2 to Reader. On the ground. Yeah, is there. Really contact and staying off the barrel with that good movement. But good job by Cody Shojinaga over there sticking with uh, looked like an easy play, but it was tough with these conditions. This is Logan Maxwell. Drove in a run in the first, singled in the third. Starts him off with a strike. Strike two. We talked about Maxwell. The hitting streak of now 14 games goes back to last year. He was 10th coming in in the Big 12 with a 421 average. So but nothing to bring that down tonight. This is a tough matchup right now. Chase Dutton is just uh, 
where Reese Dutton is just really looking on his game and that breaking ball, he is spinning it on the outside corner, but this is the toughest out of TCU lineup guy who has been tough to get out all year long. Swing and a miss. That is a nasty slider right there. And that's a low and in one, right? Yeah, lefty's back foot. That, that previous one was back door. That one was a more of a back foot change, uh, breaking ball. And easy to swing right over the top of that. And that's one of the toughest uh, outs in the Big 12 he just got right there. It's five strikeouts now in the last three innings for Reese Dutton. Anthony Silva steps in, 0 for 2. To me, this is the biggest uh, un biggest inning for Reese Dutton and the uh, uh, Jayhawks. They just put up a two spot to take the lead. You can go up and throw up a zero right here. You really do a lot to keep the momentum on your side. Yeah. Outside, two and one. Saw Dutton go seven innings against Texas Southern earlier this year. This is down and low, three and one. His 80th pitch. And what I was most impressed with at that was he still looks strong, just as good of velocity and ready to go in the seventh inning. Looked like he could have kept going. This is a walk here, his second. Number nine, Brody Green. So one aboard, two down for Brody Green. Green with a single and a strikeout. That was a nice at bat by Silva, laying off a tough pitch right on the corner right there. Could have gone either way, but he's a base stealer as well, a guy that you got to keep an eye on, and it's going to look to get on a second base here with two outs. Silva, four out of five this year, stealing bases. Two. He's starting ahead in the count. Hanging on to that 2-1 lead. I like the way he's able to go back to back with pitch. He'll go fastball in and fastball even farther in or a slider away and then even farther off the plate. But doubling up on some pitches where he just misses on one and able to go get it and uh, perfect it that next time. And that's a good uh, uh, habit to have as a pitcher, being able to adjust and make a little adjustments to get it just how you want it. Swing and a miss. Sixth strikeout for Reese Dutton. And he preserves the lead. 2-1. Uh, having a really nice game, but yeah, his defense has been really gone hand in hand with uh, Dutton and the way he's creating ground balls with that movement. Taking it into right field, Boyer's camps under it, one down. Had a good look at Reese Dutton in the dugout. You mentioned even as he was coming off the mound, a little fired up there as he uh, he, he got the strikeout. Well, he thought that was the biggest inning uh, yeah. of the year as well, maybe of the season. You get, team gives you the lead. You've been fighting all game long and. Yes, it just shows you the competitor he is. And he doesn't look like he's losing it a little bit each inning. He looks like he's gaining a little bit each inning. And he's doing a fantastic job doing something really special against a team that usually hits the ball hard all, all, all the one through nine. He's keeping them in check. Jans lifts this one to right field. Warriors battling a little wind. Next to catch or two down. Good pitch from Abbott going across home plate and 
two quick outs up there. He's, he's ready to pitch as well, but it's such a weapon uh, to bring into the game uh, in relief. Uh, guy that can come in, all-American type guy, come in and go after these uh, crucial parts of the game. Collier, Cranford. Who walked in that fifth inning and came around on the home run. I like this move. Your, your pitcher just gave you a good inning. You want to give him maybe a little bit more time uh, to relax. It's been really quick, a uh, couple pitches, and maybe get a pitcher off of his rhythm j just a slight bit, encourage your hitter, but also give your pitcher who's been battling for you a couple more uh, minutes to, to breathe and get, get himself ready to go. So pretty quick at bats there. Cranford with a quick word with his coach. Hey, Bones. Back to the mound. I don't know. The way Reese Dutton came off the mound, I, I think he's ready to go back out. Hey, Bones certainly looks like he's found his rhythm now. Yes, he has. And he's working the bottom half of the strike zone up there, working, working quick and showing you why he is a uh, preseason All-American. Out and foul, 0 and 2. Just misses down low, 1 and 2. Strike three called. Quick inning for Ben Abelt. Kansas with the lead as we Lewis. What do you think the additions to the Big 12 baseball-wise? Uh, Big 12 has always been a fantastic baseball conference, one of, the, one of the best in the country. Obviously, SEC is probably uh, the top, but Big 12 is right there, especially with pitching. And I like the new additions. They'll be uh, uh, wild. A lot more Big 12 games than normal. But, uh, addition of really solid teams. Now it popped up into center field. John Nett is there. There's one down here in the seventh. Now batting for TCU. Right fielder, number six, Luke Boyer. Their good pitch uh, from Dutton right there, forcing another early contact. Right now sitting at 87 pitches here in the seventh inning, doing a really good job and showing some fire at the end of the last inning with that nasty breaking ball. Uh, just dropped in to, to end the inning. So he, he's got his stuff going and look, looking look stronger and stronger. Strike to Luke Boyers, the right fielder. Reached on the fielder's choice, struck out in the fourth inning. Doesn't struck out the side in that fourth. Found the way, it'll be 0-2. Yeah, it's a whole different look. You looked at those teams on there and all Big 12 schools, but the only one not in the Big 12 was Missouri. When right. I was playing, that was the main number one rival, and that's uh, it's a whole different looking conference. But it's gonna, it's been one of the premier conferences where a team or two has been making it to Omaha, the College World Series, ne nearly every year and having a lot of success. Down low from Reese Dutton. We mentioned went seven innings against Texas Southern. Swing and a miss. You said that between innings that you thought maybe he was getting stronger. His seventh strikeout, maybe that's the case. How about this nasty pitch against a really good uh, left-handed hitter and Boyers getting in on the hands, almost a power slider right there. That is just a power pitch and he's getting stronger and stronger, getting more and more strikeouts as, as this game's going. Already seven on the day, doing a nice job. A lot of ground outs, a lot of strikeouts. Chase Brunson steps in now. 91 pitches for Dutton. And up early again, 0-2.
TCU's been an aggressive hitting team. They've been going after some early pitches in the count, and I love that two-seamer with how that moves so much. It just stays off the barrel. How about that pitch? Strike three called, his eighth strikeout. Reese Dutton is dealing. Kansas with a 2-1 lead over TCU here in Lawrence. Hey, saving your bullpen, but that's the kind of fight Coach Fitzgerald's talking about with the whole team. Uh, uh, Reese Dutton is doing that uh, big time tonight, and those are three nasty pitches to, to end that inning, just fall off the table breaking balls. Chase Diggins steps in. He had the big home run in the fifth inning to put Kansas on top. Facing Hodges. Up high, ball one. Side 2-0. Oh. That's been the difference in this game. Uh, Chase Diggins working the count to his favor, getting in a good hitter's count and taking advantage, showing some good hips and hands extension, driving the ball out of the park and uh, taking the lead with one swing of the bat. It's been what the Jayhawks have needed. Three straight balls now to Diggins. John Nett, the leadoff hitter on deck. Four pitch walk. Kansas has the leadoff batter aboard. Good at bat for Diggins once again. And not only that, now with the right hander in, he's got some speed as well. Might not straight steal, but on base, he has a chance to move up a first to third and really good athlete out there. Put some pressure on a defense. Nice night for John Nett. Double a single. Ball outside, five straight balls now from Hunter Hodges. The Frogs will converge. Well, this is a big part of the game. TCU has been winning a lot of their ball games, one run games, and you'd like to think if you're the Jayhawks, whatever you can do to manufacture a run and see if you can get uh, add on some uh, it, these runs later, just worth uh, worth their weight in gold with that, how important they are. So, just a little breathing room, right? Yeah, coming into this game. You're thinking about two uh, tough pitchers going at each other, and they, they went at each other hard. We've seen nothing but good pitching uh, so far. A little bit of uh, out of the zone wildness uh, to start out is a uh, start for Hodges, but it has been top notch pitching. And now, here late in the game, you know, compared to that, bats are going to win it late. One out of net. There's a strike, one one. Diggins will head to second base. Great. Uh, that's a nice read right there on the down angle. Saw the breaking ball and not going to get there. Just taking off even before a, a good catcher has a chance to block that ball. So showing some good speed and athleticism. And just good base run, not having to do a straight steal, but being able to get into scoring position here. And you now a ground ball to that right side would be a premier at bat. Takes it hard down the right field line, but foul. It's just a good read from a base runner, isn't it? When you, you see that breaking ball is going to hit the ground. Just read that down angle, and you treat it like a stolen base. Once you see the angle going down, you don't wait for the catcher to do it. If it's a bad catcher, he might try to scoop it, and he might throw you out. But a good catcher will go down and block it. You'll see that angle, and you, you can take the base. That's a great read. Good pick there from Bowen. Like on that one, you might be in trouble. He just it goes and picks it, but... Uh, most of the time, the catcher will go down and try to block it, and you'll have the base stolen. That is really nice. That's a tough pitch to, to pick up on that in-between hop. Full count now. Nobody down. Runner at second. Swing and a miss. Throw go down to first. A 
one away. Nice breaking there, breaking ball there by Hodges, go, getting an aggressive hitter just uh, a little bit out of the strike zone, but could block again. Uh, Bowen back behind the plate, just he, he, like a cat back there. He's uh, really solid and works well with these pitchers. Shoji Naga, the double in the first inning. Looks at ball one. Fly out in the third. Struck out in the fifth. Want to go, but did one and one. It's like a power cutter from Hodges. It looks like a fastball coming in, but it has a little bit of late break at the end and still has good velocity. Hard to check again. One and two. Just coming over from UNC Wilmington. On the ground, runner goes. He's safe at third. Another good piece of base running by Chase Diggins. That was a close one. That was a really aggressive and another great uh, read right there on that down angle on the breaking ball. Great effort behind the plate trying to get uh, get a base runner. But how big are those uh, two extra bases right there? Now a ball put into play. The infield moving in or uh, driven into the outfield will be a run here for the Jayhawks. And love that base runner without having to give yourself away with a straight steal. It will be uh, just by paying attention to the game and, and knowing the game, getting into scoring position once again. Bounce towards the third base side as well. So even better job of getting a third base. Up high. Like a home plate umpire, Matt Anderson, just giving a little extra time maybe to Carson Bowen, who got that uh, ball in the dirt. Up the middle, that'll do it. Run scores. Zunaga gets the job done. Great at bat from Cody Shojinaga, living in the middle of the field. He keep the ball in the middle of the field, even with the drawn in infield, to enough to uh, get that runner in. And a great read on first uh, downward angle. Once again, that's three times uh, Chase Diggins uh, read the down angle, whether it be the pitch or the ball uh, going into the ground. And he got a run for his team, either home run or manufactured a run right there. That, that's just all around good baseball. And, Chase Diggins is having himself a nice game, doing everything he can uh, to help his team and rewarding his coach for getting him in the lineup. Well, he called a great piece of base running all the way around. Yeah. Leads to a run. Lenny Ashby now steps in, looking for his first hit of the night. Okay, he's number three hitter. Good breaking ball, one and two. I think that's the difference in the series uh, so far. Uh, Cody Shojinaga putting the ball into play there with two strikes. TCU has been striking out a ton of uh, hitters leading the, the nation in what they can strike out per nine innings. And already nine games where they've struck out 10 batters. Jayhawks putting the ball in play. And that was a great example of getting it in play and, and getting a run. Manufacturing one uh, late in the game, really tough to do, but well executed. Hit hard, base hit to right. First hit for Ashby. And the Jayhawks was one aboard with two down. Lenny Ashby, happy to see a right-hander in there and just <laughs> took a nice swing, got a breaking ball hanging up about belt level, got the hips into it and a quick bat driving it through that side, keeping this inning going with two outs. Pinch running at first stage for the Jayhawks. Number two, Mike Kazuski. Uh, Mike Kazuski is running at first for the Jayhawks. The lefty looks in and deals. 
on the ground to second. Yay. Over to first. One pitch to get the job done. But Kansas. Uh, belief in the team right there, and what a great quality start. He gives way to Tegan Kane. What do we know about Tegan Kane? Tegan Kane, big time uh, arm, uh, came from the JUCO ranks in Barton College, has about a three quarter arm slot, he got some movement and really live fastball. He can live uh, 93, 96 miles an hour uh, with a good live fastball and a big time uh, strike thrower. Guy that likes to come in and attack the strike zone multiple pitches. It's the top of the frog order, Peyton. Shot and yay. One one count. On the right field line and drifting foul. One, Kane ahead in the count one and two. So. One thing I really like about Tegan Kane, he looks like he's just playing catch with you out there. He's not overthrowing at all, but last two pitches, 195, 196, and he just, uh, that ball gets there. His arm works really well. He's got a three-quarter arm slot, and the it, it, ball just it explodes out of his hand. Really good guy to bring in here for uh, short uh, any type of work. Swing and a miss. Kane comes in and gets a strikeout. Took a little bit off that right there, and nice uh, change up, almost like a split finger action, tailing uh, action. It took 10 miles an hour, actually 12 miles an hour off of his uh, live fastball, and that is a good mix with the same arm speed. That easy velocity is fun to watch, isn't it? <laughs> that, that is. It looks like he's out back uh, just uh -huh. playing catch and uh, just popping the mitt, but that, right when he releases it, he is hit, hitting that corner, and he is not overthrown, but I lo love those mechanics where he can get that shoulder all the way through and, and extend. And Sam Myers now for the Frogs. Got a base hit in the third inning. Walked in the first. And up in the count now 0-2. He loves seeing this for guys like Kane. Big, he always been a huge KU fan, just always wanted to wear the uniform and now able to do that. And the biggest games they've had all, all season long, a game they're playing great. And he's in there do, doing his best, throwing some lively stuff, 96 miles an hour with that fastball, some movement. Really like the, the looks of him coming in, throwing some gas at the end of ball games. One two pitch. Strike three called. Back to back strikeouts for Tegan Kane. That pitch has everything you want as a pitcher velocity, 95 miles an hour, right on the corner, good location, and some serious movement tailing back to a catcher. That is a great pitch, tough to execute, but the, probably the best pitch of the game right there. As Jayhawks enjoying it. Now he's facing off against the number three hitter, Curtis Byrne. Fielder's choice in the third inning. Good off speed there. You go from 96 to 83. I'll tell you what, the TCU has been known for their 10 strikeout games this year, and uh, right now, Jayhawks going for their 10th. Three up, three down, three strikeouts for Tegan Kane. Kansas will try to finish things off. We're heading to the top of the ninth here in Lawrence. Jayhawks leading. Ready to pitch and uh, forcing action right now and 10 strikeouts on a team that can put the ball in play. They are looking fantastic. Jansen Reeder steps in. Looks the ball one. Foul on the right field line. They're looking for his first hit. Mm -hmm. 
Right down the right field line, drifting, drifting. A good play from Boyers. Come back and get it. One down. Nice hard hit ball from Jansen Reeder. Hit a mile high up there. And when it comes down uh, behind the hitting facility, that building right there, it stops using the wind. And it can be a tough play. See a lot of uh, tough plays out there in the right. But Boyer, he can play anywhere in the outfield. He's a really nice utility player out there that can switch it and play anywhere you need in the outfield. All the outfielders have done a pretty good job on the with some good win tonight. They have. It's been a really well-played ball game. Good at defense all the way around. Great pitching and some timely uh, and uh, clutch hitting. But really good college baseball all the way around. Fine plays. This is Michael Brooks with a single in the fourth inning. He hits that one hard to right center field. Warriors not going to get that one. Off the wall. And a stand-up double for the Kansas third baseman. That's a perfect approach for a left hand going against the left handed arm, staying inside the ball, taking away the outside part of the plate, and really driving it with some power. Using the hip, staying on top of the ball, not really dipping underneath, but getting on top and driving it. Another extra base hit for the Jayhawks. So multiple doubles, a home run. They have done a, done a good job with the bat. So when they swing it, they're getting on to second base at least. Third double of the night. Not just Jans. The ball hard in the second inning. Peyton Chanye stole a base hit from him. One down runner in scoring position. Hoover <laughs> had to let that one go. And Not sure why he threw that. Yeah, you don't have to throw that one. <laughs> almost, almost put it in center field. Frogs want to talk about it. Well, credit to both sides. It's been a really chilly night. It outs to certain type of hitters. You can see why this is a tough team to face. Their bullpen is definitely a strength of their team and pitching all the way around. It's been some good quality at bats. Chase Yance hit a ball hard earlier and that kind of set the tone for keep giving quality at bats. All right, here's Jans. Pounds it into the ground. Oh, one. Lifted to right. Warriors has had a workout. Makes the catch, runner tags. We'll go into third base. Michael Brooks. Some hustle. And you could read there by Michael Brooks moving up 90 feet and now with two outs opportunity for the Jayhawks to do something special and driving a run here or see what they can do to get home with just at 90 feet. But good base running, aggressive once again without stealing a base, still taking that extra base. And it's been meaningful in grabbing this lead. Collier Cranford scored a run in the fifth on that home run after drawing a walk. That's a ball one. Lays down the bunt. Pretty good pick there at first base from Byrne to retire the Jayhawks, who are three outs away from handing TCU its first loss of the season. Top of the ninth coming your way from Lawrence. We can bring it, too. Got up to 99 miles an hour against Texas Southern. You saw it. Yeah, so I haven't seen that up on the scoreboard very often, but that was nice to see. Came in for one batter and just gave him max effort. He's got closer-type stuff where he can live in the mid to even upper 90s and just got a big-time live fastball. His arm's as good as it has been in quite a while. He's feeling good and ready to be in this uh, situation. Toughest three outs of the game, but 
he's definitely got the stuff to do it. He's got good off speed as well, and he's going to be letting it rip tonight, going, uh, going, uh, maybe even going for triple digits on that. I don't know if tonight's the night for that. But after does scoreboard seeing, have three digits out there? <laughs> after seeing that 99, that, that that was special. He's got he's got a big time arm and can go after this uh, lineup with everything he has. I'll see the four, five, and six hitters from TCU. Logan Maxwell. Designated here with a single in the third inning. Grant delivers. Foul back. 97 on the gun on that one. Your TCU, this is the guy you want up right now just to try to get things going. A guy that's been getting on base all year long and the highest batting average is in the Big 12. Outside 1 1. Just misses outside. Two and one. Nice looking pitch. 98 right off the outside corner. And ball is jumping off of his hand, popping that mitt. Drop back two and two. Catch up with that one. Fouls it back. Well, Cranton really gathers himself. He looked like he's bringing it all behind it, doesn't he? Just going to say that, Cranton, the kind of guy you want to stay out of the windup. If you can get this leadoff batter out, that'd be huge. But from the windup, he really gets stacked. He gathers himself and uses his legs to create a lot of velocity. So the off speed. We're full now, three and two. Yeah, really good pitching mechanics, and he has the the stuff to be one of one of the top uh, closers or relievers in, in in the Big 12 with, with the way the ball comes out of his hand and the, the late life. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Cranton. Let's go, and he is fired up after this one. That pumps me up right there. He is feeling it right there. 98 on the corner. And that's a professional pitch. It's a professional glove hitter. Love seeing that uh, enthusiasm. He put a perfect pitch together right where he wanted it. Anthony Silva steps in. Looks at 98. Strike one. Another good pitch, 0 and 2. Nasty cutter right there, almost a slur type action. A really hard uh, slider, and that thing broke right off the outside corner, taking the 12 miles an hour off of his fastball. It's a really good off speed pitch as well. Oh, a pie, 1 and 2. You can hear that one coming in. That sounds like a train co coming your way. And yeah, that's Remember how those seams sounded when they, when they buzz your tower? Silver so fights that one off, so one and two. Now that's a good uh, setup pitch. If you have big time velocity, you can work the top of the strike zone too. And getting a hitter to change his eye level can be huge. If he's locked into one spot, uh, he can have a huge advantage, but using the top of the strike zone, now he's really set up a lot of pitches going away after that up and in, the chin music. Yeah. 
Strikeout number two. And the Jayhawks are one out away. That is how you pop the glove right there. That thing just exploded the mitt right on the outside corner. Wow, that's uh, that's a great pitch and love to see. That's some heat. That's a big league type stuff. 98. Able to locate that as well. Brody Green. Try to keep TCU's hopes alive. Their undefeated season on the line here. Strike one. That's just a tough pitch. <laughs> you see upper 90s. That's got to be unfair. And that's a hard slider, but uh, that's taking a lot of speed off of his fastball. He's living at 98, 99 miles an hour, and the slider coming in at 86. That's a changeup as well as a slider. That is nasty. He's got all the options he wants, uh, something up and in or low and away. 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Jayhawks win it over number three, TCU. What a pitching performance.